Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are taking a look at SS1 4. This is the, technically, if you really want to consider it, it's the third Merge Kingdom, uh, where that it's in season two, right? We have SS1 2, 3, and then 4, what we have now. And currently, we are seeing P I O one uh, going uh, doing a little small skirmish here with EXV. Uh, we're going to show you kind of lay of the land here in a bit. Uh, this is really just a little bit of fighting that has been occurring thus far here at one of the choke points. Now, they're in zone three at the moment, and we'll kind of show you a little lay of the land here first. So, you have... Uh, again, it's kind of from what I understand like a 2v3, 2v4-ish. Again, we'll confirm that in a moment. So you have EXS up here northwest. You have CHA over here. And then we have... Where am I going? And then we go east. You have EXV, right? So that's one of the second EX fams. Third one, EXC, I think that was. Then you have P101. And then here you have HS, right? So that's kind of where we just were. Uh, that you're looking at here. So this is, again, where you have EXV. P101 is right here. It looks like they're gathering a little bit. And we'll come back here in a moment. I just want to show you each of the fronts. Then we have another front down here, which you can see P101. This is EXS. That's pushing down here. Uh, and again, this is also, so you have EXS pushing from the west. And then on the uh, and really they're uh, again it looks like P101 might just be leaving this area. I mean they're they're going to get this is disconnected and then you'll they'll immediately be pushing here. So you have HS that's over here with P101. Now there is CHA. However, I'm not really sure. I don't know like what they exactly agreed to. Maybe it's just like battlefronts and they're just not messing with each other. But for all intents and purposes, it feels like it's a three v three at the moment at least. So you have CHA and then you have HS. I guess this is the case, so interesting. I actually thought CHA might have been with HS. Let's take a look here. So maybe it is a 2v4, like I said. So you got P101 and HS on one side, and then you have the three EXE alliances, and I guess, and maybe EXGA, and then, uh, and then CHA as well. Let's see here if it tells us. Oh, so it is. So it's the EX family plus CHA, if we look at P101, it's HL, F, and HS. Okay. So, pretty, yeah. So, like, I mean, they're pretty far down. So, it is a 2v4 at this point. So, it's P101, HS versus these three EXs uh, and CHA. And then I guess if you want to consider as well. I don't know 4G10 if they're kind of part of Oh, so I guess maybe it's, maybe it's 4G10 with them as well. But... At least when it comes to zone three. Ooh, seeing a little push here. Nice. Let's see how this plays out. Again, HS getting a little caught off guard. CHA, nice timed push to kind of see uh, how many of them are going to react. I mean, they have some number advantages. Uh, Rog Zebek could have pushed in. Maybe that's a farmer up there. That CHA player could have pushed in as well. Uh, this is one of those situations where, again, you have the infantry, but you don't need to overcommit the infantry. Uh, sometimes, especially if you know now again, they're catching them really off guard. See, so this is one of the things I don't like where you see this violence myth player. So they're getting hit right now. Uh, the moment that that CHA player engaged on this HS player, the HS player automatically started counterattacking them. That doesn't mean they're doing counterattack damage, but I just mean general counterattacking where your unit automatically engages when you're attacked. I am of the mindset that that should not be the case. If your unit is there, your unit should be getting hit without attacking back. There needs to be a level of accountability and responsibility of players that are active, especially if you want there to be a level of true skill in the game. That is such a hard handicap that you're putting in place in, in a conservative effort to try and you know, have players feel like they're not losing as much, but that is a part of the game. Like, there needs to be a risk and reward 
So, and another example is that if you really want to take your game to the next level and you want to be able to claim that your game is the most free to play friendly game on the market, you need to do things like that where you make it like, and again, I'm still of the mindset that I would love for them just to remove counterattack damage, right? Let that play out a couple seasons and see how that works. But most importantly, what I would really like for them to do is have it where, and again, you can even do this in stages, maybe do it where counterattack damage does not start applying until that unit is engaging with another unit. Um, and then the same thing for others, right? Where if you're, like, as an example, if this player is not moving and I come in and I'm hitting that player, that player should be taking 100% of the damage that I'm outputting and should not be doing any damage back to me. Until that player comes online, selects the unit, and then clicks to go and attack me. That is when you should be, that's how you should deal damage, in short, right? Is you have to be active online and actually be attacking, uh, and I think if they did that, we would see the level of true skill. We would actually see a, a what I would consider to be a, a quality level of true skill in the game. And I think you, at that point, could then make the argument that COD is the most free-to-play friendly game on the market because then you could you could literally have a group of free-to-play players that just wreck spenders, especially if they catch them off guard or they're not paying attention, right? And that's really how you do those types of things, right? You make it so players have to be accountable when they're actually fighting in a warlike scenario, right? And a good example I'll give you is if you're fighting and let's say both of you have a rifle. One person is standing still and the other person is aiming, shoots them, kills them. We're talking like, you know, in a real life scenario, in the example, the person who's standing still isn't going to automatically return fire the moment that they're hit, right? Even if they get hit in the shoulder as an example, right uh, or the leg or the hand uh, or uh, or the arm right they're 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 not going to immediately return fire at that point and 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 that's what I'm talking about you could you could kill a unit uh, in in this game where they have to be paying attention to what they're doing now it's not an apples to apples comparison obviously but the concept is still there where that's something I would love to see them do. Because I also think this resembles a little bit more, and I guess if I'm making a better comparison, this resembles a little bit more of like something like StarCraft or a traditional RTS where you're attacking a unit, but that unit is not automatically attacking, at least for the RTS games I've played. Right? You actually have to click the unit to then go and attack. So that's something I like to see. Just a small, small little tangent there. But yeah, I guess, so I guess they are together up here. So... We'll come back, see how this is going. So, I mean, to be honest, it does seem as though the EX fam plus CHA have a little bit of an advantage. Um, again, I think it's it's probably somewhat unrealistic for them to expect to have to fight on multiple-ish fronts. I mean, again, the bottom here is actually okay. It's just HS would have to be pushing a little bit more. And then you have... One of the EX families, and then you have the big the big one that's obviously happening up here uh, with this fight. Ooh, this is massive. But, yeah, oh, there's not. Oh, I thought there was more P101 people, but there's not. Let's see here. Oh, did they summon? I can't tell if P101 summoned something. Just because, oh, they did. They summoned Giant Bear. Dang, doing some damage right there, dude. A lot of the EX players are out right now. Full force. What are we seeing here? Seeing a lot of Nikos, seeing some Lilias, oh, we got some Velns. Ooh, look at that Eliana Garwood, kind of the budget off tank comp that you're usually seeing with Madeline Nika uh, or Nika Madeline. Let's see, we got a Kanara up here. Ooh, would love to see that secondary as long as okay. So went Kanara Nico. Okay, so then that's what we've been seeing Kanara Nico, Nico Kanara. I've seen. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a Wald here. Is that Walder Elwin or Alwin? Maybe we'll have to see if I can see some of the seconds on. Oh, I can't. No one's engaging. Oh, wait, hang on. There's one over here. Let's see if we can if we can look. Walder, he's retreating. Maybe there's one over here. Yeah, and I mean in this situation, unfortunately, P one hundred one just doesn't have enough people. Ah, uh, in this case, yeah. I mean, exe really flooding the area here. Now it's not everyone's fighting. Obviously, you have some that are engineering and removing. In this case with P101, I wouldn't overextend in this type of way. I would have these players coordinate, and what I would do is I would push them over to this side, and then just, again, pick off one by one, focus fire 
them down, but do it from a point where you're being able to pick off the branch that's sticking out the farthest, right? That's something that would really allow to kind of play to your advantage. Also, with these EXE flyers, I would go even more wide. I would go all the, I like again, if you got two, three, four, five flying units, I would bring them all the way over here and I would just pick them off one by one, right? I go who has ever lowest, picking off this newbie player is what I would do, then going and picking off this last newbie uh, march. <clears throat> And then even if you're just going around and maybe just going deep in territory, finagling, and maybe hitting some farmers as an example. Like, that's something I think would be really cool to see. Oh, but the counter there from Namikaze Minoto. Nice. Yeah, again, just not enough P101. Again, they have the... This is not a bad keep because they're doing constant damage, right? If you, if you think about the position of this keep on this choke point, which they have to come through, this is not a bad play. But you can see here, clearly, EXE has a lot of people that are coming in right now. Yeah, I mean, again, again they just have good numbers, right? Sure, uh, the keep, the people in the keep are probably going to get some at least some decent damage, maybe some, some nice merit points. But, again, as long as you have a lot of activity, you know, you're, you're probably going to get, ooh, jeez, dude, they're throwing down, man, EXE, they're throwing down everything. Right now, they got two Beastmasters, but... Oh, that's interesting. I actually thought that they could attack each other. Maybe I'm cray-cray on that one? Probably go with a hard yes. I'm really curious why he isn't just going in and attacking more. I mean, it's either go in and attack or let the cooldown run out at that point. So, yeah, really curious, though, if anyone is playing here in SS1-4... Are you of the mind, like, again, what's the play here? Is is this an organized thing? Is this just all-out war? Uh, are you guys only pushing them out to zone three? Are you going to push them more? Like, I, I guess I am curious on, are there any terms here that have been set? Is it just, you know, do as much as you can? So, yeah, and, you know, typically in these situations where you see a lot of them out, sometimes the better play can just be set a time, even if it's 30 minutes, an hour from now, whatever it is that can be somewhat realistic, and then just coordinate, right, a push. Sometimes doing this where you guys are just kind of going in one by one, I mean, you are seeing some more troop movements here, but where you're kind of going in one by one, it's just it's not the most efficient, if you're kind of going batches of 10 or so, or maybe you have two or three, two to four players out there, and you guys can kind of coordinate, that to me is enough to at least start doing some poking and some kind of picking off. But outside of that, if you're going to try and do some type of organized or coordinated push, usually you want to set times for those, and then you will gather in a staging area, and then you can go and do your pushes. Um, right, you know, at least compared to if you're trickling them in one by one, two by two, or three by three, and then you're just going in to, to try and hit and do something. It's just not going to be the most effective. Um, especially, I mean, now, even in these situations, this actually isn't that bad. Sometimes you can just wait for the behemoth to run its course, right? That's an option. Now, if you have enough people online, sure, you can probably burst down a behemoth one by one, uh, especially if you're trying to pull the behemoth a little, a little ways away, Right? But outside of that, if you don't have enough people online, then what I would argue is just kite the behemoth, right? Let the cooldown take its toll. And even in these situations, if you're going to summon behemoths, now, it's not a bad idea to be able to summon behemoths, especially if you have enough already saved up and you're trying to just do a bunch of damage and get them off. However, what I would say is that it's better if you summon a behemoth when you're going to do an engaged push because then you have the behemoth that can almost be your primary disruptor, right? Your, your pure tank disruptor. And then it allows for you to actually have more time to get your infantry deeper into the territory along with then being able to alleviate a lot of that pressure that your damage dealers might have taken. So again, there's certain ways that you can approach it. I've seen people throw behemoths down even just as a way to delay... Uh, destroying time on flags and forts, um, disrupting them a little bit if maybe there's not a lot of people paying attention. And you probably have a guess or a good idea that, well, hey, maybe not a lot of people are on right now and they're just sitting there destroying it. I'm going to summon this behemoth and like kill everyone. I've seen that happen before where they've been able to kill a lot of builders or all the builders. 
But they also have some good activity. This is just not necessarily the best case where you're going to summon a behemoth. You usually want to do it in cases where you are seeing good general activity or just aware aware awareness or aware activity, I guess I could say. That's where you want to try and do a coordinated push and then summon a behemoth. Yeah, like even in this situation, bunching up like this is just not ideal. Again, spreading out is really kind of what you want to do so you're taking less AoE damage onto you and then you're able to, uh, again, output more overall damage, right? So again, think of it think of it like a Rome Total War, right, where you're kind of spreading out your legions. That's kind of the idea behind it. Uh, same thing if, you know, you're ever watching, you know, like StarCraft II pros, right? Microwing kind of splitting up and distributing some of the troops so they're not all kind of hived up or clumped in one spot. Even in this situation, right? Good activity, but spread this out a little bit, right? You can just see the multiple negative red, and that's just all that unnecessary AoE damage, right? That those players have a higher likelihood of incurring if not automatically ooh, nice shadow games that was thrown down there uh but again that that was on them again this isn't it's not to say this is bad it's just you're just taking a bunch of unnecessary damage that you don't need to necessarily be taking all right guys where am i at i'm almost 16 minutes right now i definitely want to cover some more i think work is calling for my face right now so yeah like i said i want to hear if you're an ss1-4 let me know how the war is going uh, again, are we? do we hate each other's faces? Is it something that's agreed upon and we're just going to play it out to a certain point? Right? Let me know in the comments down below. Would love to. Man, gosh, I wish I had some more time. I'm a big fan. I always love watching fights as long as they go. And this is kind of like a nice, you know, kind of almost, you know, heads up fight that you're seeing here. Uh, I, again, I, I really would just like to see a little bit more coordination on focus firing here. Almost from both sides. You can see that multiple people are hitting their own people and then even here right like this is maybe a little better because you're seeing it a little bit more condensed at least in this interaction but outside of that and also this is the thing this is why you don't want to put yourself here you're in a corner right they have you boxed in you need to at least have some uh, some nice positioning some breath if you will uh, uh some territory so that way you can kind of move around between this is hard because they basically have you funneled into a corner so Anyways, uh, with that being said, that's going to do it for me. Uh, happy to be able to show off a little PvP today. And hopefully we'll be able to get you guys some more from some other kingdoms and showing you off a little bit more about how some other wars that are going on as well across the Khan community. That is going to do it for me. As always, until next time, I will catch you later.